Yay! All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, <laughs> so we're we're live from Gamescom today. Um, I'm Kelly. Obviously, you guys know me as your community manager, uh, and you guys most likely know Phil Bull, our game director. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Great to be here. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're live at Gamescom in Cologne, Germany. Uh, it's really exciting. We've got our first consumer hands-on, which we've actually got right outside these doors, which you can't see. Uh, <laughs> but there's a door right there. Uh, we swear there's a door. <laughs> there is. Um, and yeah, and excuse that there's there's a bit of noise going on. Um, there may be some connection issues as well. We are streaming live from Gamescom and it is a very, very busy time. Um, so yeah, it might get a bit noisy. It might get a bit frame droppy, um, that sort of stuff. So uh, please bear with us. We'll try our hardest to make sure that it gets, it's obviously still visible and all that good sort of stuff. You'll still be Absolutely. able to see the gameplay. Um, and yeah, so we are showcasing uh, Mission 14, which is the same that what people out there are going to be getting their hands on as well here at Gamescom. Yeah. Um, it's a very different uh, mission in comparison to what we saw at E3, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, so the E3 mission was uh, like a highlight reel, a sort of thread that ran through a much larger mission, and this is that much larger mission. So. Um, whereas the E3 mission was very linear and the Eldar were sort of punching bags, here you have lots of choice in the directions and approaches you take, and the Eldar are out for blood. You know, they heard that they were a little underpowered at E3 and their vengeance <laughs> is the, the, uh, the order of the day. Yep, so they're going to come at us at all... Uh, uh, at a, yeah. Yes. It's going to be messy. It's going to be messy. Um, so why don't we start loading it up right now? Uh, we'll get Great. back over there. Excellent. Um, yay. Uh, as an FYI as well, if you guys or if any of you are at Gamescom and you, you stream, you have a channel um, and you would like to stream Dawn of War to your oh, audience, you can do so. Just contact us at uh, on Twitter at Dawn of War. Um, and yeah, you can and start streaming so just yeah just get in contact with us just message us private message us you should be able to on uh, Twitter and yeah you can you can come in here and, and you can stream live to your audience the whole mission which is great, great. Uh, so at E3 we started off with a little sort of area where you played just Gabriel and then we gave you Solaria and you got to try out one of her abilities uh, here because we're showcasing the sort of strategy element we go straight to the part where you get your army and your base so this is like the real RTS, right? Nice. Solaria, leave me. Victory here means death. I once thought the same of my home world before you arrived. Sire, to the west is a colossus So the frame rate's a bit dropping, gate, guys. How deploying Eldar in great numbers. We are running at 720, um, so it is, it's not as it was at the office. They are also working um, to activate another colossus gate. Is it, is it Together still Together we can conquer these perils, perils and the others that await us. You are all certain, are you? First, okay. we must put these Yeah, so sorry it's laggy, like guys. Uh, running on Gamescom. Uh, here it's it's yeah lots of people are running internet sort of thing and it, it is quite messy so I'm sorry about that we'll try we'll try our hardest in getting it uh, as optimal as or optimal as possible. All right. Well, in the meantime, let's take a look here. I've got a partial base set up. You can see these buttons here are shortcuts to the various buildings, and you can see there's two that are empty. That means there's two base buildings I don't have. Yet. So I'm gonna build those. And the servitor we didn't see in the E3 mission. We didn't. This is our builder unit returning from Dawn of War 1. So I'm going to build a Doctrine Chapel, which allows me to build Devastator construction. I'm also going to send some guys up here to capture this resource point. Okay, so I'm getting an objective to investigate some points here. There's one nearby. So let's build some scouts. This one 
tiles to please the Emperor. I'm also going to build an arsenal, build which is my upgrade building. Arsenal. Our scouts are ready and waiting. All right. So. We have with our marching orders. Preparing heavy bolts of devastators for deployment. All right, I've got a question from Xerathon. When is Dawn of War 3 coming? It's coming out next year. It shall be done as you like it. All right, so my scouts are stealth units, so they can go without being detected. Although if they get too close to an enemy, they will get, they will get detected. Let's go see what we have up here. Oh, there's a bunch of enemies, so let's try and avoid them. I deployed alone, hoping to spare them this. Where kings tread, knights ever follow. That was close. Okay, so there's also some resources to pick up. Man, so close. And I'm gonna try and hide them in a corner here. And we can also see there's some bodies and a piece of a dreadnought. Sounds like some blood ravens. Some legs. Yeah. <laughs> and I also have a bunch of Eldar, including, let's see, what building is this? This is the Infinity Portal, and it produces wraith units. So those are their heavy, heavy infantry. They're very dangerous. The are forces around the western gate. Oh boy. Keep an eye on them. I want to know when they make their move. Let's bring some people up here. And we'll also build a listening post over here. So the listening post is different from Dawn War 2, right? It's returning from Dawn War 1. Yes. Uh, so in order to get more resources, I buy these extractors, and the listening post will protect them, builds a turret on the, the capture point, so it helps me defend. Let's see, what do I want to do here? Let's gather my force and move up a little bit. Solaria's abilities are going to be really useful in taking out these buildings, so let's, let's get her forward. Let's see if I can get my infantry into this cover. Some missile pods. I know. Let's... That's not good. Uh oh. So they're coming at you basically. Yeah, let's see. I look up here, I can see them coming. They, you can see they can they can cut right through these barriers. Okay, so I better move some guys Just into a defensive position. There we go. You can see that listening post is starting to. So I notice that there's different colored spots around. Yes. So this is the number of resource upgrades I can purchase. So the yellow ones are for requisition, which allows me to buy infantry, and the blue ones are for power, which allows me to buy vehicles. So I'm a little hungrier for power right now, so I'll build that. Okay, I was able to fend off the enemy there, so let's, let's see. Let's take some of my devastators into this cover. Others around. My scouts are still alive, so we can find some more. Uh, Katie and us, any word on if the Land Raider will be showing up in Dawn of War 3? Uh, so the Land Raider is not currently planned for Dawn of War uh, 3. It is a uh, you know, likely candidate for uh, an elite unit at some point. It's really the most special Space Marine land vehicle. Uh, the armored units in the line unit uh, range go up to the Predator tanks here, which and the Whirlwind, 
the land speeder and the dreadnought. Let's see, let's build Assault Marines, ready Assault for Marines and a whirlwind. Okay, I've got another one of these gates. I'll let Solaria deal with that. Send my scouts forward here. Oh! Okay, so I can't actually get through there, but I can see there's a point up here that has four resource nodes, so that's that's pretty valuable. Uh, so it's actually the upgrades on the points that generate the resources. So you can see that I have these little extractors going. Uh, but they're vulnerable to attack from the enemy. So the listening post protects them. You have to destroy the listening post before you can target these. And it has a turret. Speaking of which, I will add one to this point here. Okay. Let's get Gabriel over here too. So I got a pretty valuable point over there. Oh, they're well. There were my scouts. Now I'll bring in a whirlwind. So the whirlwind's uh, an artillery tank and sort of custom made for this type of problem here. Uh, so we also we also have stealth cover, which I'll show you in just a second. Once I get out from under, oh, I may have bitten off more than even Solaria can chew. Bring in some extra assault marines and. Oh, well, that's not good. Solera can deal with that. What do we got going on here? Let's give these guys a flamer. Where's Gabriel and all this? Uh, Gabriel's hanging back, so. Speak and see glory. We serve the understood and underway. Some more resources to grab. Yeah, so stealth cover, you can sort of see these smoky areas here. Uh, so if you send units in there, they'll be hidden from other units and they'll be able to see out. Uh, so it adds some interesting tactical gameplay there. So let's make my units a little stronger here with some upgrades. Point captured. May this fuel our victory. Preparing land speeder for deployment. Tactical okay. ready. This is. We could do. Let's reinforce him. Ready. Let's take out one of these gates. Land devastators are ready upon the field. What is the target? The order is. Our last cannon will leave. Our land speeder is deployed. All right. Okay, so I need to get a servitor up there if I want to build a listening post. Preparing servitor for deployment. And he can help take care of Solaria as well. Servitor deployed. You have but to commands. So take care of a uh, half. 
Uh, oh, so she's taken a fair amount of damage. You can see here if I look at her actual hit points, she's down to less than half. Uh, so she's a vehicle, so she can be repaired. Um, the actual fastest way to heal her would be to get her near a base building. Uh, so I could also do that if I want to build a forward base. All right. We have guns. engaged the weak enemy force to the southeast. More enemies. More enemies. Where's my land speeder? Let's see. Let's go scout out what I have got waiting for me over here. Uh, so Dover King, 25 us. Is this a mission or a sketch? Yes, this is a late campaign mission. So... Flamers... We can get through nice. cover, which is helpful <laughs> taking care of those guys. Pull these guys back. And use plasma guns to take care of them. Obedience compels servitor. Our brothers are met by a weak enemy force. This one to the southeast. Okay, now I've got a a time pressure here on these emitters are sort of getting the second gate uh, out of the ice, so I'm gonna want to start pushing that way. So Let's start doing that. I'll maybe bring Gabriel and Solaria back towards the base. The Elder have launched an attack from the West Gate. They are preparing heavy bombs and devastators for deployment. Get a dreadnought going. Oh, I can bring in my third elite. Oh, right in time. That's, that seems helpful at this point. Stun. So you can see they can still suffer some knockback, but they are quite healthy. So. So how did you unlock those? Uh, so there's a, a resource called Elite Points that builds up over time, and each Elite has a cost. Now for this mission, Gabriel and um, Solaria start unlocked, but the Assault Terminators, I had to wait for those points to build up. Uh, okay. All right. I'm gonna bring in my whirlwind, which has a very long range. These guys can take care of this. Extra fun. Okay, so I'm No, actually our campaign will alternate between the three races. So you'll play mission one as Space Marines, and then mission two as Orcs, and mission three as Eldar, and then back to the Space Marines. That allows us to do some fun stuff where we see the Last same event from different perspectives, or uh, sort of 
cause a problem in one mission that we solve in the next mission uh, and so okay. on. So a lot of fun there. So here's that stealth cover I was talking about. So if I go in, I will start getting some line of sight and they get this little icon that indicates that they're hidden. Where did I leave Solera? Okay. Let's get some support over here. Bring in Okay, so I've, I've got a lot of melee firepower here with these guys, but they definitely need some ranged power. That's, that's what Solaria brings to the table. And also bring in some of So land speeder I can send almost anywhere on the map. So it can do things like scout up in strange areas. Alright. See, with the whirlwind, I have a really impressive range. So, how far about is the range? It tells you when you. Yes, when you use the ability, it'll show you that that's the minimum range, and the maximum range is out here. So you really can keep it pretty far back, which is smart because it's it's a fairly vulnerable unit. Even though it has heavy armor, it. Um, it doesn't have a lot of hit points, so the right units can take it out quite quickly. And that will affect what you see on the, um, the fog of war, I guess, right? Yes. Okay. So you need to send some units out there first. Yeah, if you send scouts forward, they can they can uh, recon for it. Our brothers are met by a weak enemy force. Okay, let's see what we got here. Some enemies. Let's try a death storm drop pod. To Lighten up the load here. Initiation cleansing protocols, yeah. I thought that little text came up. Okay, these guys here, the Wraith Guard, they are definitely the most dangerous thing I've got here, so. I'm just gonna <laughs> lay into them. Oh, I am definitely in a rush here. Ninety-nine percent. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to slow it down in time. We have engaged the weak enemy force. Oh, it's at a hundred. Very bad. Okay, so I now have to destroy the gate. Let's do that quickly before they send in a bunch of guys. The Eldar have activated the second Colossus gate. They will muster from there as well, in greater numbers. Uh, Titan 90010 Can you upgrade Solaria to the Uh, not Solaria. She's sort of char characterized by being a ranged powerhouse, but there is a version of Imperial Knight that is more melee focused. The first one is down. Okay, we took... Good. They weren't able to bring in reinforcements from it, even though I, they were able to activate it. Alright. Now... This 
Let's see if I can deal with these. Okay. Now I have to get over here. I've got a signal over there. Where is it? It's right here. So let's go investigate that. Let's push back to safety. Oh, my... Uh, uh, destroyed. My whirlwind got destroyed. Let's see. I think it's time to tech up. Let's do it. So I'll let's go up to tier three. tier 3. This will unlock my tanks, my orbital bombardment, and a few extra upgrades. Let's upgrade my vehicle damage here and give my scouts some mines. Let's see. Speaking of my scouts, they're over here. Let's get them scouting. Miesh, 30 asks, can't you just fill those drop pods with TNT? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have uh, death storm drop pods, right? Yes, those are pretty much yeah. the equivalent. <laughs> yes, we have death storm drop pods that they're filled not with TNT, but with high explosive assault cannons. Uh, so they lay down a lot of damage. I used one er a little earlier. But yes, you know, it is part of the Space Marines characteristics that they can drop things from orbit with precision and instead of just dropping big rocks on people and blowing them up they drop dudes, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you know that's that's their their move it's good tier three upgrade complete okay so you can see i've unlocked another drop pod and some tanks Predator annihilator readying Let's for drop. some tanks go in here Assault squad ready. Okay. Now with these drop pods, can you drop them down anywhere on the map? Anywhere I can see. Ah, okay. um, so it, you know, they can be used very aggressively to drop units right in, into the enemy. They can also be useful as a kind of reserve in case like guys start attacking your base and you need to immediately bring some some troops in. All right, I'm doing some economics here. It's to help. Yes. yes. Okay, so we're gonna push this way now. Let's bring the tank. Drop pod deployed. I hear you. What's the order? Oh, there's a little... Ah. But that won't stop my assault marines. <laughs> oh, God. There are a lot of Eldar around here, but... There might... Ah! Stronghold endure. Eldar warriors are sieging our stronghold. Ah, uh, uh, getting attacked in every which way. Yeah, like I said, they're out for blood this time. <laughs> Target strong point in scouting. Predator annihilator from the same system is ready. That's guaranteed here. Predator annihilator ready. Predator annihilator ready. Predator annihilator ready. Oh, that's a problem. a bit of defensive work here. Uh, Swift Saber asks, how much British the is there in this game? We don't want Proxy Yanks voicing our guys. Full oh no, the, the entire <laughs> voice cast is British, actually. Uh, we record in London, uh, and uh, 
yeah, I'm really proud of the voice cast. Um, just we're we're getting some great stuff. Um, you know, we we've used uh, there's some of the actors that we used in Space Marine are there uh, for some of the background characters. They are now brought, brought up into the fore, and uh, just a much larger cast. But yeah, all London actors. Okay, I need. Oh boy. Uh, I, uh, here, these guys will. All my armor. This tank will take some of these resources. The weak enemy force. To the southeast. Uh, cash prize money is asked. Can you change the minimap position? Uh, yes, you actually can alter and put it on the other side of the screen. Whatever your preference. Exactly. Angelos. Okay. Uh, Kaltos asks. Oh, excuse Ooh. me. Uh, who's the composer for the music in Jordan? Uh, that is Paul Leonard Morgan, who's an amazing composer. He uh, sort of splits his time between Los Angeles and and uh, the UK. Uh, he previously did the soundtrack for Dread nice. and uh, for uh, you know previous video games, and just he did the soundtrack for our trailer as well. He's just he's wonderful. I could not be happier with the music. It's phenomenal. We did shout him out um, after we released our uh, trailer as well um, on Twitter. So, and I know that I think he has a website as well, which he, um, he does. puts a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Which is really okay, cool. so here's a bunch of Eldar. I'm going to go ahead and death laser them. <laughs> right, straight in with the big guns. Don't go on easy. Yes, yes. We're not messing around here. So, uh, these guys are very dangerous for me, so wow. start, start dealing some damage there. Oh, oh, there's a fire prism. <laughs> I do not want to leave that alive. There we go. Okay, so I didn't get much damage on the gate, but... You the defenders are a little clean. Oh, oh. yay, mines! <laughs> so, Master of Ruffleness. Hello, Master of Ruffleness. Uh, he asks, how will units heal and reinforce? Okay. Oh, oh Gabriel. Gabriel! No! <laughs> That's what I get for answering questions while I'm trying to destroy the Xenos. It's all your fault, Master of <laughs> Uh So, units can reinforce when they're near a production building. You get back. Oh, God. That's not, not good. Not good. I'm sorry, that was uh, my bad. I distracted you with a question. <laughs> that's that's okay. I I was overextended. It's my fault. Let's get over here. Now that I've taken care of the 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 objective that had time pressure, I, I'm actually I can take my time a little bit. Let's fill up my drop pods with, let's do one of those death storms, maybe a dreadnought, and, oh, yeah, exactly. Um, some heavy bolts, just it looks like there's a lot of people over there. Okay, this dreadnought got hurt, so I'm going to heal him up. Got my assault terminators up up here, and then I think I had nope. So down here at the bottom, I have all the units that I have built. So this one would 
sometimes if I'm not sure where I have a, a particular unit. Let's do all these guys. Let's build another couple servitors to help. So servitors can follow around. Yes. Okay. What's coming from the western gate? Oh, it's a little heavier, so... Let's make sure I have some last cannon. For deployment. Oh, let's, let's build some mines. Try and build some mines quickly. Oh, too late! Uh, too late. No, they're stopping. Oh. Get my snipers up there. Last cannon devastators are ready upon the field. They are. They are absolutely brutal. Okay. I need some melee to take care of that. So, so the assault marines will help. Our brothers are met by a weak enemy force. To the southeast. This place. Pathetic at our foe named is a foe hated. Servitor. Where shall we strike? Nothing will escape our holy one. Our site remains to play. Assault Terminator's ready. So we'll have a full army painter, you know, as we've had in previous games. And the elites have a limited amount of choices you can make in terms of their gameplay impact. Uh, but our focus is really on making choices at the army level, on sort of deciding what units, I, choosing between, you know, the example of the Imperial Knights I had. Like, do I want Solaria, or do I want the Paladin who has, you know, a big chainsaw? and uh, has a more upfront style. Yes, thank you. All right. We have engaged a weak enemy force. Southward. The Trakina is ready. Okay. Let's see. Let me use my land speeder here to try and check out this ah trouble <laughs> i need those resources but i never truly led fortunately i can get over here that beautiful statue a lava waterfall because you know warhammer I'm just gonna try and scout out what's happening. We have engaged a weak enemy force to the southwest. Okay. Whoa, just jumped right over that. Yes, he can sort of go anywhere, so including non -path traditionally non pathable spaces. So even though his health is relatively low, he is very nimble. It's because of them that I got this resources too. Your hey. sacrifice will be repaid with victory, brothers. We will see to that together. Uh, so Freeman, 1800 asks, so is there a pop cap in the game? Yes, there is. There's down here a pop cap. You can see I'm actually at 198 of 200. So I'm pretty close to a, to a full pop cap army. That's because I have all these guys down here defending. Built up a bunch of guys. Okay, let's see if I have what I need to deal with cover here. Yes, these guys should help. They're not the best at dealing with. Yes, and I'm gonna. 
pull them out. So they're taking some losses. Give us a This one toils to please the Emperor. Uh, Box 4 says no servitors, they have too much personality. We have engaged the weak <laughs> to the southeast. Wow. Oh, I love uh, you, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time actually getting the servitor voice right. And there was, you know, there were actual moments in the record session where we were like, no, more robotic, <laughs> less personality. So I guess we failed. Uh, okay. Our brothers are met by a strong one of our friends who has failed us. Oh, okay, so their cover is down, so now some Got my LAS cannons on them. That will obedience compels servitor. That's these guys to deal with. The scouts can stun them just to like slow down their firepower. There we go. Okay. I actually am going to build a forward base now. So let's build a machine cult. Oh, no, no, that's the wrong place. <laughs> I didn't see that there were enemies in cover there, so <laughs> let's go deal with them, shall we? I'm sorry? Ah yes, that's my elite points uh, that I would use to summon elites. Um, it's also associated with using the orbital laser, so there's there's a cost every time I use it. Uh, it builds up over time, so you start the game, you're not able to summon in all your elites quite. Okay, so now back to my plan here. Build a base building. I've got some drop pods. Let's load them up. Blast cannon. Whirlwind. Readying for drop. Oh, actually, that's canceling. Cancel that. So I'm canceling that because I'm actually building the the vehicle construction building here. So. I, for the express purpose of bringing in more more uh, vehicles when I get a chance. Uh. Okay, so got a bunch of guys here. Let's move up. Last cannon devastators are in position. Oh boy! Amos. So these last cannon devastators are very good at dealing with flying units. They have this ability here, bonus damage versus skimmers, so if I can get them onto the Falcon, you won't last terribly long. If I can't, the Falcon will murder me. Oh, bad. Whoops. Let's see how it goes. Where are my uh, I'll bring them forward to We serve the truth. Oh, we got another Eldar gate here. Let's take care of that. Our brothers and are met by a weak enemy world. force. To the southeast. So now that we've destroyed the two gates, yes. I see there's another map. Yes, so my objective is to get to the Eldar Temple here. So there's an Eldar force of unknown composition defending the temple access. So I need to push in there. Now, given how strong the the Eldar around the two gates 
were, my expectation is it's going to be pretty tough. So I'm spending some time building up my guys. Another reason I built uh, a forward building here is my elites will heal around it. So that's quite helpful. Okay, let's bring these guys up this way. I think I cleared out everyone here. Yes. Okay. Move these guys into cover. Okay, so you can see something happening here, which is uh, line of sight. So this terrain is actually significantly higher than the terrain here. So you can see the edge of the fog of war. So for all I know, there's a whole Eldar army up here. Uh, so if I send my guys up, uh, they could be running into a trap. So I, it's in my interest to scout that. So I'm going to use my scouts to go see what I've got waiting for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sending in my tough melee units, uh, the Assault Terminators and Gabriel. I'm putting them here in in case they, they charge out of there. No, Gabriel, don't go too high. Oh, look! Indeed, there is a bunch of dudes. So let's, let's do some artillery and soften them up. That helps. It helps, but the uh, yeah, the wraith blades and and wraith guard are actually really resistant to that artillery, less so to my assault terminators. So that will help. Now Gabriel is an early game elite, so he's against infantry. He's quite needy, but in later games you do. Later in the in the game, you do have to manage his health a little more, uh, so that's that's why I was pulling him back. speeder over here. Let's get it over some impassable terrain and see what I can see. So I've had some questions about modding support. Yeah, absolutely. So mods are a really important part of the history of Dawn of War. Uh, you know, the fact that people are still playing Dawn of War 1 and Dawn of War 2 has a lot to do with the healthy mod communities there. You know, the Ultimate Apocalypse mod for Dawn of War 1, the Elite mod for Dawn of War 2, these are really great mods, and then there's a whole series of even more stuff. So we're committed to doing, to supporting mods. Um, exactly what that will look like at launch and what the like rollout of uh, mod tools are, I'm not really ready to talk about yet, but, uh, you know, the modding community is really close to my heart, and, you know, I want you know, a couple of years from now to be sitting here talking about like, oh, wow, what great DAO 3 mods there are. And 10 years from now to be talking about how the DAO 3 mod communities kept that game alive as well. So, yeah, we, we, we love mods. <laughs> yeah, I noticed uh, one of the questions before was from Kaltos. Uh, he's one of, the, one of the mods. Well, there we go. <laughs> okay. So I've got that same high ground situation here where the enemy is somewhere in here. Now I've got a bunch of guys in reserve and drop pods. I've got my orbital laser, so I am playing a little cautious. Let's see, do I have... I lost my scouts though, so I'm gonna have to... Oh. So these gates help the Eldar warp in, so when I see them, I want to get rid of them before they can start dropping a bunch of forces on me. Okay. Gabriel, time to lead your troops into battle again. I'm going to take one of my servidors and try and repair my, my land speeder. And... Let's 
let's see. Let's let's poke with the barrage. So you can the whirlwind. You can barrage blind. Um, it's obviously much less effective when you're in there. Oh, I can. Yeah, I can hear some dying going on. <laughs> there, so I know there's some guys in there, but it's not tell showing me exactly what. It's, oh, oh here, now they're all here comes some. Again, I want to get my assault terminators in front, so they can deal with my major problems. Same with my dreadnoughts. Oh god, what am I dealing with? Oh, looky there. Okay. Uh, that is a Wraith Knight. So that's an Eldar super unit. Um, big cannon, sort of the Eldar version of Solaria, and uh, he is going to hurt me seriously if I let him. He is, so let's, let's get Solaria up there, and it is, no, that was not what I wanted to do. Oh boy. Okay, you can see Solaria is doing some melee attacks. That's because she had Wraith Blades uh, attacking her, which are the, the sort of large uh, Eldar melee units. And they're large enough that they can actually do melee tie-up on her. Normally, like, Banshees won't force her to do melee. Oh, that's not good. He's using abilities on me. Time to return the favor. Laggy. Um, it is really busy quite quickly here. There's a bit of lag. And there's a time. What? There. It's pretty heavy. Down. Oh, Solaria is not. Solaria is so close to being down. Yes! Alright! <laughs> she made it with like three hit points. <laughs> Run them down, brothers! This victory. Nice. So, that actually, that last little bit, there's a last line where the Eldar say, we'll make our stand at the temple with Lord Kyre. That's an example of setting up the next mission, right? Ah. Where you might play as the Eldar dealing with that situation, or the orcs coming and ruining everyone's fun, except the players, of course. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're doing a sort of narrative handoff mission to mission. Right? Okay. There's a full, complete Space Marine mission from Dawn of War 3. Nice. That ending, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I thought <laughs> they were going to push me back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was well prepared. I mean, I've played this mission a bunch of times, but uh, whenever that Wraith Knight comes out, I get a little... <laughs> a little verklempt. Yeah, I remember when I first came up against it, I was like, what? Not expecting that. And then everyone died, so I had to retreat and then start building up again because I just wasn't prepared for that at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll answer a couple more questions um, before we do head off. Um, so we have one from Britard MKD. Can you build everywhere or is there a command zone? There are no command zones. You can build everywhere on the map. Um, it's up to you to decide where you want to build. Uh, your HQ does start in a fixed position, but everything else can be built forward any, anywhere you want. Uh, so that gives you the ability to have multiple bases, multiple retreat points, um, you know, reinforcement points, and uh, just builds the strategy from there. And in fact, in a multiplayer game, forward building is, is a large part of the gameplay. So. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. 
Filthy Phil PhD asks, will the dreadnoughts be upgradable in any way? Can we give them assault cannons or anything? Then maybe vel ven venerable dreads as a least? Um, the English language? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Dreadnought line unit is a melee specialist. These are the sort of classic Gone of War Dreadnought. Uh, but you will see venerable Dreadnoughts, yes. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, Adeptus Nubis, uh, looking at that unit roster, how important is unit micro? Uh, really, it's up to you. It can be quite important. Uh, you saw me use the early in the mission, use the Tactical Marines Flamer ability to sneak some guys in and take cover, and then uh, you could see me doing things with the scouts and avoiding enemy fire. And that, you know, that in the heat of battle, that can also be very important. Um, there's, you know, some specific unit countering, like getting your last cannons onto that Falcon and so on. So some micro can be quite important there. Uh, blocking enemy units coming in to tie up those last cannons is, is really important, or else those Banshees are just going to murder my, my Devastators. Uh, so we definitely have a game that rewards people who are into microing the line units. Um, but that's only one of the viable strategies. You can also focus on the elite heroes and use the line units more as a mass. Um, and that will work. I would, I'd say that's sort of the, the entry level strategy. And then learning to make the most out of your line units is the sort of advanced play that uh, people who are f more familiar with the uh, RTS from the get-go will jump into that earlier. Other players will sort of graduate to it, I would say. Um, but yeah, the more you invest in controlling those units and knowing them, uh, the better your results will be. Definitely. Uh, what was the other one? Kids Jin? Uh, will there be other night types, like the ones from the trailer, for instance? Uh, yes, so the, the Imperial Knight in the trailer is the Knight Paladin, mm -hmm. and we will see the Paladin, yes. Nice. Uh, will there be maps from another planet, says Fad Lanu? Yes, there are multiple tile sets. Uh, we've, you know, Acheron and this frozen layer is sort of at the center of the narrative mystery of, you know, they're all chasing this powerful spear that they're trying to retrieve. Uh, but there are uh, several other planets that they, they visit on the way. So you'll see a wide variety of environments. Um, and I think, I think they're going to blow people away. I'm really proud of them. Yeah, because we have only seen the one, so with the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, other one. So yeah, there's, there's many more to come. Uh, and then RLMS in, no, RLM Sinistris. God, I'm really bad at names, I apologize. <laughs> uh, will more races be included further down the line? Well, we're focusing on these three races at launch. These are the ones that give us that uh, sort of gameplay triangle we, we want to build the foundation of the game on. But, you know, like I said when I was talking about modding, I want to be talking about Dawn of War 3 in five years and, you know, all the awesome races and content that we've released. I'm a you know, Dawn of War fan certainly, but a Warhammer fan from long date, and I want to do everything under the sun. Uh, the key to doing that is to having a really strong gameplay foundation, and that's what the, the first three races give us, and then we'll be welcome to pursue other, other factions. There's so much in the 40k universe, I can't wait to get to some of them. So many. It's so good. Uh... <laughs> Servison asks, will I get a girlfriend through playing Total War 3? <laughs> that, my friend, is up to you. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's, I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, thanks so much for joining us, everybody, here at Gamescom. Um, there is going to be more info coming down. Make sure you follow our Twitter. Uh, we're going to have live tweets and such from Gamescom here. Um, and, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And, uh, you know, can't wait to have more people play this. Yeah, we're so looking forward to everyone getting their hands on. Uh, we're also going to be at PAX as well, uh, PAX West. So if you guys are close by, make sure that you do come on by to PAX because we're also going to have the same gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, 
And yeah, we're really looking forward to you guys starting to play it and getting your impressions. No kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs>